Bloody beautiful, a fresh water rinse is very welcome after a couple of days in the salt. So we got rain coming. <laughs> oh, mate, how good's this? Hey, the last hot rain. It's pretty tough going here. Yes, yes! That is honestly one of the biggest mud crabs I've ever seen. G'day, good morning. My name is Aaron, or Az. Welcome back, guys. I'm Strick, and this is Back to Basics Adventures. For those new here, we're a couple day into a month trip exploring West Papua, one of the truly last wild places on Earth. It's a place where nature is still at the top of the food chain. That's why we're here, mate. We're here to get really amongst it, aren't we? Yeah, too right, and the objective of the day is very simple. It's one, is to make sure we find food. We've got minimal provisions. We just got a bit of hunting, fishing gear, filming gear, and this local boat that we've sourced. The second one is finding a safe camp, and one of those should be relatively easy. I'm not sure which one you're referring to, but anyway, <laughs> it's gonna be one hell of an adventure. Let's go, mate. Yeah. And there's the golden rule of camping. Leave nothing but footprints. How insane is that visibility? So clean. And all this here, right out the front of where we were camped up. We're just cruising along the coast here and there's miles and miles of this epic, epic landscape where this rainforest comes down into the mangroves and onto this coral reef. So as has got the drone up above us at the moment and we're just sort of cruising along here. And basically just gonna see what we can find in this bay. How does it look from the bird's eye view, mate? It's honestly world class. It's just so pristine. Rainforest, a little bit of fringing mangrove, straight onto the reef, and then it just drops away to deep blue. You can pretty much see every rock, every corally structure. Very cool. Nice. Scattered through the middle of all these islands is fringing reef and all these big reefy outcrops like atolls that come out of sort of 50, 60 meters of water to almost as shallow as hitting the prop. So anytime we, we go past one with a bit of bait flicking, we're having a quick cast. All right, we're just making our way up this tiny little mangrove creek. We're just gonna see how far we can get. A boat this long isn't so maneuverable in a little tight creek, but we'll see how we go in here. Looks like it goes up for a really long way. Yeah, does it keep winding up a yeah, while? Yeah, so getting an eagle eye view, it starts off where, I don't know, it's probably 12 metres wide now, as creeks generally do. It's just getting narrower and narrower, and the mangrove forest is just encroaching deeper and deeper further over us. So, yeah, we'll give it a crack, <laughs> see how far we can go anyway until we can't turn the boat around. This is just pristine mangroves here. This is really, really cool. I feel like the canopy is starting to really encroach over us actually. But we'll keep putting up and see how we go. Man, there would have to be mud crabs up here. This is just prime, prime mangroves. And crocs. Yeah, for sure. So this is the creek we wanted to go up, but it looks like there's a, a tree only freshly down straight across the middle. So that rules that option out. We're gonna head back down this way. Ooh, watch that, let's watch that spear gun. What was that? The outboards are playing up. Yeah, the port motor keeps it turning on. Mm -hmm. Just check the fuel here. Yeah, no fuel. Worse, worse. Oh, yeah, there's a bit of dirty fuel in there. Fuel's pushing through now, but yeah, we'll need to clean this filter out. Well, right, we've taken the boat up as far as we could up that river, and now we're going for a bit of a rainforest walk. It's massive, isn't it? It's a good fan. <laughs> Have a go at the size of some of these trees in this rainforest here. It's pretty special to be in an area where there's been no logging, no commercial clearing of any land. And this is like rainforest in its absolute purest form. You've got these, these strangler figs, which is this one that has, has literally strangled the life out of that host tree and then takes over. It's a, a really special spot to walk through here. Try some. Yeah. Quick trip to the moon. As that mate, there has got to be some mud crabs in around here somewhere. Hey, all this thick mangrove. As this behind me here is just absolutely pristine mangrove system. 
And I feel that because this area doesn't get fished at all, there's got to be some giant mud crabs out here. And I think that's what we're going to go in search of this afternoon. I know you guys love them and we absolutely love eating them. So that could be the mission of Salvo, in search of a giant mud crab. Yeah, we've walked up for about half an hour and there's this little waterfall. Bloody beautiful, a freshwater rinse is very welcome after a couple of days in the salt. Absolute paradise. Right, we're out of the mangroves, back on the big blue, and we've got a couple of hours steam to try and find a new camp. It is after lunch, so the objective is explore a bit more through the islands, find a camp where we can set up for the afternoon, spend the night. Safe anchorage is always incredibly important, and the bonus would be if there's a bit of a fringing reef off it, so we can try and catch some lunch, because there's a bit of hunger getting around the camp. Just coming through this channel, there's a big sort of almost exposed sandbar with fringing reef around it right in the middle of this channel and there's just current sort of swirling around the side. So a couple of flicks of bait, so it's about 35 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna jump in the water, see if we can get something to make a bit of lunch out here. All right, mate, we'll see how we go. Good luck, mate. As is having a swim here, but there's these schools of bait fish, the fusiliers up the top here, which generally means the bigger fish like giant trevally and stuff aren't too far behind. So I'm just gonna have a cast with a popper, see what's happening. See, mate? Oh. I saw one Maori sea perch, which I oh, laid yeah. on the bottom, and I was scratching around, but he was real cautious of me. I reckon if we head further up the top, that'll be the spot. All right. As has just seen a big GT up in front of him, apparently. Cast out there and hope for the best. Oh, this GT's chasing this. <laughs> Our first West Papua GT anyway, man. Right on this pressure edge, we just come up to where all the bait's sitting on the top of the reef. Oh, mate, how good's this? We're just catch and release for these guys. Beautiful giant trevally. These guys get a hell of a lot bigger, so we'll let him go and give him the best chance to do so. Like there's one hell of a storm brewing out the back there. All those clouds are coming down from the mountain range. It's gonna be a fair bit of rain in that, but we're persisting here as is still on lunch duties. He's just swimming along this reef edge here. You can see there's lots of bait fish. Fingers crossed you can get something we can do up for like a quick ceviche style lunch. And then we're gonna keep pressing to, to find a camp, yeah? Come on, Az. Pressure's on, bro, I'm hungry. <laughs> Hungry, mate. Yeah, I am. Matter of fact, I am. Oh, beauty. Yeah, it just came in right on that last dive. Nice, man. Nice, probably, what's that? Four or five kilo Spanish. Yeah. Oh, geez, what's your feet? Yeah, mate, I'll <laughs> take his tail, but not his head. That's There's a beauty, Spanish mate. mackerel, that's for lunch. And we'll have a, a bit for dinner and 
and then maybe, I don't know, we're pretty hungry, but maybe for breakfast in the morning. I honestly thought I'd lost sight of the objective there for a while because I was just floating around for ages, just staring at all the coral and all the fish. It was so beautiful, but Strick put the pressure on me. He's like, mate, come on. The hunger's building up here, so shoot something. And I was like, all right, all right, all right. Every few twists and turns and islands, we're coming across these really little village, these localized villages. They generally have their homes built on stilts, like timber stilts over the water, right on the reef. And one of the features is always having like a coconut plantation out the back, whether it's like a few dozen or hundreds of coconut palms, the tree of life as they call them. Looks like we got rain coming again. The goal is to get some of this white flesh, cook it in the acid of the citrus, add a little bit of soy sauce, throw it on a cracker, but this mackerel is literally 10 minutes old. So we're just gonna take a nice chunk off it now. If you are in the market for a set of knives to last your lifetime, these are our Back to Basics blades. You can find them on our website. We have been hammering these for the last two years, pretty much use them every day, and they're number one. Is that enough for, yeah, mate, for a snack now? Yes. Bit of that belly meat, nice. So I'm just gonna cut straight down where the pin bones are. Take the skin off, there's no bones in that. Chop it up as fine as possible, throw it in this juice, and then in 15 minutes, we'll eat every last piece. And at some stage, in the next hour or two, we need to find somewhere to stay for the night because we haven't selected a camp, nor is there any hot contenders at this point in the no, time. So stay, stay tuned while we try and find somewhere to stay for the night. Oh, that's better. That's got some juice. Right, while it's low tide, we've come to where this creek is. There's this little drain that's coming out here, again, for crystal clean water onto reef, but there's a mangrove system. So we're gonna walk up it and see if we can find any mud crabs or anything else of interest. Yeah, you can see on high tide, the water would sort of be up to my chest. It'd probably be yeah, a meter and a half or two meters higher than it is now. This here would all be underwater. Almost every chance that there's, there's crocs up this system. So we just gotta be yeah, wary of that first and foremost. So I will be doing my best not to walk through stuff like that. It's, um, it's extremely thick going through there. So I don't really know if it's worth trudging through there. Yeah, it opens up a bit here, mate. Man, I reckon there's a good shot of one being up here, eh? It looks really likely. I uh, almost feel like playing a game of hide and seek here because uh, the mud crabs, while it's low tide, they really rely on their camouflage to stay hidden. Um, they could be hidden under any one of these logs here. They look awfully similar. Jeez, it's pretty tough going here. So keep your eyes peeled. Ouch. I feel I'm right up in the thick of it now. What I'm looking for is big pieces of structure where they might be under or just sitting on the top of a bit of mud or really big mud crab holes. Never seen one of these before. It's like a mangrove prawn. Check that out. Oh. Mangrove yabby. Getting deep. <laughs> like this to me here is pretty prime country for a mud crab. It's like sandy, muddy, a lot of mangroves, a lot of structure, but no one's home. Whoa, I'm now getting eaten alive by mozzies. The other thing we can do for food is that all these mangrove snails. There's some big ones here. See this? Oh, this one comes with an oyster. So in here, there's a snail. You could eat that and a little oyster on the back, but we're not quite that desperate yet. We've still got our heart set on a, a giant mud crab. Yes, yes, yes. It's a big mud crow, a really big one, but he's, oh, he's on the wrong side. Don't go there, mate. I better get him on the other side of this. I'll swap him over hands. Yes, as, woo! He's got a hold of this mangrove. Let go, mate. 
You beauty. Have you got the size of that? Oh, that is a giant West Papuan mud crab. Look at the size of that nipper. Holy moly. I can hear a hell of a lot of commotion on the other side of the creek. I'm pretty sure he's found a mud crab. Oh, as fast as I can. I'll make, I'll make my way over there. Check out the size of this big bloke. That is honestly one of the biggest mud crabs I've ever seen. How wide is it? Massive, eh? Hey? Look how gnarly its claws are. Giant. Is that a couple of battles? Couple of bust ups. Yeah. Awesome, mate. It is so, so damn cool to be sort of walking through like this crystal clear water and the coral and just back there have these giant mud crabs lurking around. What an amazing like merging of two ecosystems. Mate, we're gonna have a feast tonight, bro. I think this is my catch of the day, which we did really need. <coughs> nice. <coughs> Normally we have a sack to put them in to keep them calm, but we've only got our clothes. Wonder how this shirt got holes in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mission success here in the mangroves. I'll get a look, see if there's any other way in. Yeah, this is all in the next sort of six hours. We'll be out of the water. We're not sure if there's going to be anywhere that's safe enough to anchor the boat. Maybe that's why it's abandoned, mate. Just sunk too many boats. So we're going to head up around that corner. We're going to go up another 10 or 15 miles. It's always going to be one of the most challenging things as like finding anchorages as we go. Uh, I'm still not sure how that's going to play out today, but we've got to find find somewhere mate it's like a bit of a ticking time bomb as the day goes on but hopefully around the next corner We've been dodging rain squalls for the last hour. We've come into this little bay and it's really, really nice reef, but for the purposes of getting the boat in and getting an anchorage, it's Tudak Bagus. No good. On to the next spot, wherever that is. We feel we might have bitten off a bit more than we can chew with this mackerel, uh, but it is good to sort of pay your tax around these areas. So there's a kind of like a, a one lean to tent here. Must be a local fisherman that's fishing this area. We'll see if we um, see if we can offload a fillet of mackerel to him. Oh, mate, I think keep going forward 50 meters, and then there's like a sand channel. Yeah, and then straight that way, mate. Let's go say good day. Hey, hello, sorry. Namasaya Aaron, Dan, Jack. We got satu ikan, but two basar for for us. So, kamu mau? Yeah. My name is Luis. Nice to meet you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'll see ya. Bye bye. Bye bye. Because bye -bye. So I just wish we could have sat down and like had the big yarn to them, but yeah, yeah just the language barriers. We've checked quite a lot of beaches and bays and it's sort of getting on in the day. It's about, it's just after three o'clock. We're really hoping that this one here is the one. There's reef that comes pretty much all the way up to the beach, but it's not far off low tide. It's only gonna drop another foot or foot and a half, 30 centimeters. Any left for me? The Namus has probably been going for an hour. We kept saying to ourselves, oh, when we, when we get to the new camp and we get set up, we'll have some lunch, but it's taken about three hours longer than anticipated, but we've selected the camp. It's just behind us here, but can't get in there. <laughs> Mm. There's a few big rocks in between us and the shore, so we're gonna have to wait for that tide to come in before we can get in there. Some of these anchorages are proving to be like an absolute nightmare. There's all these rocks. Uh, it's a bit like a minefield, but now we've come far enough offshore that I think we're gonna be right leaving it here for the night, probably 200 meters offshore, out a little bit deeper. We've anchored it now, uh, throw a mask on and we'll swim on in. And so begins one of my favorite times of the day, the afternoon cook up. Let's do it. All right, boat. See you in the morning. seeing if there's somewhere for us to camp up here. I think we're in luck, guys. So this is the tide line you can see down here, where the tide would have got to last night. It's only getting smaller now, the tide. So right here, if we do like a, a fireplace here, that'll be absolutely perfect. And this monstrous mud crab that you got just before. Yeah, man.
keen as. All right, let's get a fire going. It's been 15 minutes and already there's a couple of dozen hermit crabs trying to get into the mackerel. All right, anyone who watched the last episode will already know this trick. Uh, but it involves a clam full of sand and a bit of petrol out of our water separator. Do have to do this quite quickly before that fuel evaporates. Oh, this is all so wet. It's just been pissing down rain kind of off and on the last few days. When it's really wet, I reckon the teepee's the way to go. It gives the wood a chance to to dry out and it doesn't smother your fire. That's a nice bit of hardwood. We're away. Now, of course, if we just lit that fuel up, that'd go bang and be gone in five seconds. But by putting it with the sand, it allows that candle to stay lit for 15 minutes or so and allow the rest of this stuff to dry out. We'll do our best to do this meal and sunset justice for you. Mate, I'm genuinely very, very excited to eat this. These guys are probably my favorite catch to eat because we don't always get them but they're just so, so darn good. Just pulling some coals to the side. I reckon the best way to cook these is just on a bed of coals. Um, we have, of course, put this guy to sleep as humanely as possible. We do that with all of our crabs and crayfish before we cook them. Just people on YouTube, some people on YouTube don't like seeing that, but he is asleep, guys, or he's, he's dead. All right, I think that's got enough heat there now. Let's get him on there. Once that shell starts to turn in that nice orange color, that's when we know he's cooked. All right, we'll give that crab about 15 minutes on the fire there, but I reckon one of the, the coolest things of this trip so far is every camp has been so different. The first night we had the crocodiles behind the camp. The second night we had the hornbills coming in at about this time. Tonight here, I've just had the drone up in the air and right in the shallows here is beautiful coral reef. There's big tuna swimming through the shallows here, chasing the bait fish. I was doing my best to keep up with them on the drone, but they are just so, so fast. Like way faster than any other fish you see cruising around here which is absolutely amazing. So that's just one of the, the coolest things about coming to a new place and exploring is just all this is unexpected and new. So hopefully you guys are enjoying sort of seeing this all as well, because for us, it's, uh, it's been a pretty special trip so far. Quick, quick, quick. Well done. Just in the nick of time. There we go. Man, I'm so keen for this. Yeah, the smell's coming out of it. Unbelievable. And there's something that happens to a crab when you cook it on the fire that's a bit hard to explain, but somehow the smoke gets into the flesh and it's just, I reckon, it's the best way to do it. So he's going to be bloody hot. We'll give him a second to cool down and then we'll crack him open. Oh man, I've been waiting for this moment since you pulled this out of the mangroves. He's still very hot, mate. Crack them open. Oh, mate, look at that. Island oh, lollipop. That is absolutely perfect. Very hot. Look at the smoke coming off it. That is a meal. <laughs> that is a whole meal. That is the best meal you can get around here, in my opinion, guys. The giant mud crab. Thanks so much for joining us on today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. We're going to be here for one month. We're only a few days in. There's going to be highs, there's going to be lows. Yeah. We're filming absolutely everything. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Look forward to sharing it with you. See you guys. Cheers.